Hello there YouTube. Here's a project I've been working on. I've been taking up most of my time on and off between that and yard work. It's my little lathe. I'll explain the parts here. This is the part of the drill press that held the table where it slid up and down on the pipe. So this would have been turned this way. Your table was mounted on this round part which was a swivel. Okay. I'm kind of doing this with the camera on our little mount. This is the rear wheel guts of a bicycle 10 speed. Here's where your sprockets would have screwed on. And what I did is the drill press, the shaft was bent in it. It got away from me again, it pieced it and it bent it. It was, it was made so cheap that I can't tell you how big the shaft was. This is about approximately like a 3 8 but it's metric size. The shaft and the drill press was not much bigger than this. I had to make a taper piece, so I should have my pointer. Bear with me, don't get my pointer. I'll make this a lot better. On a bicycle, those, you have a long nut. It has the nut and then a long piece of metal. I tapered it to fit this because this is a tapered chuck. Also, there's a little nut braised in there so you put a screw in here to hold the chuck on. So it's a taper fit with a screw. I used a little bit of JB Quick Weld to take up the slack and as it was curing I made sure it was as straight as it could be. This chuck is actually off. It's not the shaft, it's the chuck. But for woodwork or something it doesn't have to be that precise. It is off a little bit. There's a little growl in the bearings, but the wheel is in very good shape. Some of those bearings are just that way. But this way, use your bearings to go out before this metal hub wheel. This way you could probably replace the bearings one more time. They're just rollerball bearings. And you have lock nuts that hold it. I only have one in here because this is all locked together. This actually has the bearing surface here. And then you have a smaller one like on your old bicycles in the front that's just tapered. Then you put a lock nut. But this has a built in washer. Okay, this was the part of the drill that was mounted vertically. Here's the hunk of it. This is mounted vertically. So it would have been like this. Then flipped this way. So it's all sawed off this big hunk. There's where it went on the pipe, the actual pipe that stands up off your stand. Okay, that gives me, which I had to make another shaft for this too, because the shaft was shot. This is out of a cordless drill. I made a shaft, and there was little collars in there that allowed me to use these same roller bearings. I have a choice of this little piece I made for wood, which is made from the screw that hold your chuck on. You can stick this in wood. It has four sides to it. I call it flatted. Four sides. Or you could screw the drill chuck on. That way you could put a bit in there. I'm going to invent a lock on here so this doesn't turn. So you can put a bit in here then you can drill in. You can go like this and drill into the piece. This is a half inch chuck. This is a three eighths. I still should be able to do wood and stuff bigger. If I drilled a half inch hole in it and put a slug in there, I could still fit it in this chuck. Because it doesn't have jaws like a regular lathe. We have this piece that goes in and out. I shortened these handles. So this would allow you to drill. Or when you put a piece in the chuck, when it goes in here, which fits about an inch depth, you can bring this forward and lock the piece in the little lathe. And this lock nut right here, I plan on manufacturing something for this handle. Get the camera over here. So it only has to go so far to lock. So this is a nice chrome handle off something. So you can have a handle to lock this in place. Also down in here there's four nuts and bolts. The nuts are welded to the metal. This was like a T channel. Some of this I cut off underneath because the width this width I cut about half it off. So it has a cradle. It can't pull off there. So this is a piece of half inch mild steel which I smoothed down with my sander, flappy disc, so it slides on here pretty good. 
so this slides where you want it and then you can adjust these bolts once you adjust them you just loosen the front and it'll tighten back up again you can adjust this for this direction there's no up or down there's a little bit of play but I may have to put just a small shim in there I may have to smooth this out a little bit in here and put like a piece of aluminum or something it needs to come up in the front just a hair but for wood that's no biggie these were shortened these little rods they were shortened down the knobs screwed on the same as the screwed in here I just cut them off and used some quick weld epoxy so you got a little handle this was kind of hard to weld to all this metal because this is one type of metal kind of like a spring steel it's not too great a metal this is like quarter inch mild steel and this is a cast steel it's more to me of a cast steel than a cast iron and I did develop a few cracks in here I went back and reheated the whole thing and braised it because this was paper thin the way this was molded the other side was real thick this was real thick it was real thin along here I developed a few cracks in the back it's welded so it's welded the front the back and then on the back side over here it's welded real good in the front I had a little bit of trouble with it it's hard to see the way I have the camera it's hard to fit this in here to get the idea this will work good for small wood projects plastic plastic rod I haven't figured out what motor to put on here yet I have had the cordless drill on here it will spin it fairly decent I have had my big drill on here I have a big it's a monstrous it's not a drill driver just a regular drill with the clutch it's not your impact type drill it's a black and decker it is a monstrous six amp drill variable speed it will run this thing to tear it in anything you you would not stall with a piece of wood with that I'm thinking about making a bracket for it because I usually use my cordless drill for small stuff it's a shame that the chuck is that way that's the way they make cheap stuff maybe I can come across the other one but that is the actual chuck not the shaft and plus this turns too because you have the bearings in here it's a little noisy but I'm going to invent a way to put a brake on this some way I can stop this there's a little bit of shaft sticking out at the back here I'm turning turn back here. I'll make a little brake something with a set screw something that comes over to stop this so I can drill into something because your bit will be opposite of a drill your bit will be stopped on a lathe and then your tail stop you always bring it up and drill a hole in there's a little bit of play in here this isn't screwed on all the way there's a little bit of play in here but it's not locked down yet once this set screw is locked down this won't wobble as much once this is locked down here this won't wobble much so it's all right for wood wood and small projects I have some walnut wood if I could cut it down I can make some nice stuff this does not have a whole lot of reach even though this bar is two foot you end up with not quite it's under 10 inch reach by the time you have a piece here depends on if you use this or not you can get about a 10 inch piece in here that's about it I think it's more nine something I will be working mostly with small six inch maybe seven inch piece this is that stock I have one inch by two inch which it's not machined I had to do a lot of smoothing on here I also put punch marks to center there's also a scratch mark in here with my scratch so I should be using my pointer my carbide too there's also a center line in here so you can look down from above it's pretty good with wood I had a pencil in there I put a pencil in there and spun this last night but had to redo this the idea I had before didn't work is what's been taking me so long
The idea I had was to use different type bearings. It did not work. This turned out to be the best. The actual hardest part was to make a piece like this on my little mini grinder sander because this was a long nut. It has the bolt head and it's about three quarter inch long. And if I had the old part, I could show you. It's just tapered because this is a tapered chuck. And then it has a screw that holds it in. I'm sure I already said that. That was the hardest part to make to get straight because I had to make that by hand. But if you watch the chuck, you could tell the chuck is off. See how the chuck is made? You can actually. Cheapy, cheapy made. It's actually, you can see how the chuck goes all over. Don't have to say what where it was made, but this is the chuck that's actually going up and down. And when you get a little off here, the longer you get, the more it's off. That's just the way it is. If something's off a little bit in the back, it's going to be off a long ways, way out there, it's just like a lever. But the shaft is straight. The shaft, the bolt, the piece I made is pretty straight. You look back and that's pretty straight. You look at this part of the chuck made here, it's a little off. I'm sure people have had that on a drill press, cheap drill press. The bit wanders because the chuck is junk. <clears throat> this was one of those cheapy $70 drill presses. Is why it was junk. I said this shaft was not much bigger than a 3 8 It was in between a 3 8 and a half. It was not very big and it was not very good. It was in these cheapy little bearings that are in here. Inside of this, there's cheap little bearing, roller bearings in here. And it spins. And then you have a square part goes through your pulley so your pulley can keep turning it as this goes up and down. There's a spring on here, which I have to put on the end on the back, which just springs back, which returns your drill press up. Very cheap made. I, my advice would be in the store is look to see how big this shaft looks in the bearings and you look up in a drill press. Very cheap. Uh, that's how I got it out of the junk, because someone had bent the shaft and I took it out and hammered it out on an anvil. Well, a piece of metal got away from me. And it had to clamp down, and it smacked in the drill, and it just destroyed it. It put like an S shape into it. But also on wood, you could use this. You could put one of these in here, tapered, and it would grab the wood and spin. So you got different options to grab the wood. But I like this idea because I can put a piece in here, have this mounted. I can just bring this forward. Tighten the screw up and it's in there. So I don't have to move this to put a piece in there. This will move out. I wouldn't go out that far. You just wobble, it'd wobble all over. But as far as an inch or so, there's a mark here. That's going to be solid enough for a piece of wood. Hopefully, I'll have it in action soon. If I don't get a motor figured up, maybe some pulley system or something. I do have a really nice electric motor if I can find it. It's a small one. I do not know where it is. I may just stick my drill on it. But I hope this video wasn't too long. Get back and get a view of the whole thing. That's it. Hopefully I have a video in action soon. Thanks for watching.